Stay tuned for today's show. We've got the Aaron Rodgers debates happening. Jason's freaking out. Well, he's not here, but he's freaking out. And all of your NFC draft winners and losers do not miss it. Hey, this is Darren Waller, tied in for the Las Vegas Raiders. I am the Wallerus, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Cuckoo, cuckoo! Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Roar. <laughs> Thursday, was that a sarcastic? No, I was I was just giving him a spicy roar back. Well, Jay Grizz is in a great mood, Mike. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers yeah. Podcast. Yeah, I imagine he's probably still levitating. Bears fans were very happy to have received the Hopkins drop on the last episode. You earned it, yeah. Team Chicago. And so Jason, yeah, yeah, Jason is not here today, but I know exactly what he's doing. The bear? No, Jason. The bear's right there. No, the bear, he oh. does what he always does. Oh. I know exactly what Jason's doing right now. He needed the day off. Yeah. Because he has been trying, he's spending the day trying to trade Devontae Adams. <laughs> That's, That's what he's doing today. <laughs> that is not fault, but... Uh, you're not wrong, <laughs> but let me say this. Raise your hand if you've received an offer for Devontae Adams. I, the producer's hands go up. I know how much Jason respects me because I have not received a Devontae Adams trade offer. Unlike you, clowns, so who he, he uh, just rubs feces on his opinion of you. I don't know if that's what it is or not. When's the last time you've done a trade with me or Jason? Ooh, we've done some trades. We've done some dynasty trades. Have you? Yeah. Remember we had a big one involving Carlos Hyde. I think, uh, we, I think we traded Chris Herndon back and forth. Yeah, so high stakes trades yes. is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> but no, Jason is uh, he's out there. He's trying to figure out the storyline that gets him Devontae Adams level value. Current, but right current now. Current value yes. as if Aaron Rodgers was not a threat to leave the team. It's not good. It's not good, Green he Bay. Would, he, he's trying to not be Andy Holloway holding the James Robinson bag in yes. Dynasty. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get out ahead of it, which in my defense, I tried to do as well. I tried to send James Robinson to Brooksy, and um, Brooks is, I, did not have the, I did not have the respect for Brooks that Jason has for you, Mike, Ah, yes. and to Al Borland, <laughs> and neither of you accepted. How dare you? I would not feel bad for you. But good luck if, like, if you got the – What's your? Let's just hedge it because uh, here, if you haven't, if you've been living under a rock and you've been missing all the Aaron Rodgers news, it this fire, it, this is not smoke. I mean, they're just kind of billowing out of a uh, a bush on the side of the road. There is, it's every single day something salacious and juicy comes out every single day, talking about Aaron Rodgers moving on from the Green Bay Packers or he saying he wants to move on. Whether or not the team will allow that and trade him, does he retire? I do not know. But news of reports of, of quotes keep coming out every single day. Where are you at, Andy? Because it's all this is all just the most ridiculous, insane speculation that's going on. If you have Green Bay Packers right now, are you hedging? Are you I'm trying to a get day, out? I'm taking a day off of work to try to trade <laughs> so them away. So you are very concerned that – that Rodgers is telling the truth that he will either be traded or he's going to stop playing football. I think pride is a son of a gun, Mike. Oh, and I think look, Rodgers has that. And I think Rodgers has um, the pride that comes with three MVP awards and being the uh, – He's a Super Bowl champion. He is uh, – he's a he's wealthy the man. He's the cornerstone of the team. Yeah. And I think the franchise decided to make a pronouncement last NFL draft that they were in charge. The Jordan Love pick to me was, we run the team. And that was stupid. I mean, it's super stupid. It was Jerry Krause level stupid. Which he, the allegedly Aaron Rodgers referred to his general manager as Jerry Krause, the infamous general manager for the Chicago Bulls who essentially chased Michael Jordan out of town. Yeah. Put the team together, then broke it up. We'll talk more about it in the news. Okay. We'll pause for a moment because we have something to announce. Oh, yes, we do. 
You ready for this? The listener league, uh, the promised listener league spot, the random giveaway. Yep. For everybody that pre-ordered the ultimate draft kit, we have a winner. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, we have a drum roll. The winner is Brandon. What pronunciation are you going to go with? <laughs> Tabit. Oh, I was hoping you'd go with Tabut, but. It reads like Tabut. <laughs> But you have won, Brandon. You're a winner and a loser all at the same time. I'm sure you've never heard any well, jokes. Well, he'll probably kick our about, butt. About to butt. Yeah. He, he gets to join the listener league and the attempt. Ladies, man. Yeah, to- that's to butt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, all the other Ultimate Draft Week prize pack winners, which was the Clyde edwards Lair jersey, Devontae Adams, the video draft review, all that stuff. Uh, we picked winners for those as well, and they have been emailed. So you, if you so, won, you check your junk. <laughs> okay, just saying. All right, um, you say that and stand alone <laughs> with it. Uh, thank you for supporting us by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, following the show, reviewing on Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen. Uh, YouTube.com slash the Fantasy Football. There's a lot of people subscribe and and they even just do the listening on YouTube, but you should do the watching as well. I mean, you, I guess you, you don't have to. I'm not gonna. I'm not. In the Counts as a view of, either way. I'm not bossing these people around. You want to listen on YouTube? Okay. <laughs> and you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Before we get into buy sell, uh, I wanted to announce to all of the UDK uh, players, truthers, yes, buyers. Uh, the startup rookie rankings are now in the UDK. That is correct. And they've been updated, and they will continue to be updated because the ultimate draft kit is a living, breathing, ever changing. A uh, tool for your draft preparation. I have made the decision this year, though. I'm, I only ranked 15 rookies. Just 15? Yeah, because the other ones are bad. Do you, you've, you've drawn a line in the sand behind I Kadarius. Said I, re- I refuse to rank you. It's Kadarius Tony ends the list, and then you're just no one else <laughs> oh, after man. that? Oh, the mysterious Kadarius Tony. What are you going to be? Nothing. Oh, you're going, don't say that. He's on my team. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now, we'll see. I, I think he could. Um, he could help the team. Let's put it that way. I don't All know right. if he helps your team. We'll see. Time for some buy-sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Buy or sell, Mike. Buy or sell that Darren Waller. That Darren Waller will be overdrafted in 2021. His current average draft position is the 303 in best ball leagues. 1,196 yards, nine touchdowns, 146 targets, which was number one amongst tight ends last season. I know that a lot of people, I think us as well, came into the year last year saying, well, they went out and Brian Edwards and Correct. Henry Ruggs and maybe Darren Waller absorbed too many targets the year before, and it'll come down, and it didn't. He led all tight ends. Is 3L3 too expensive? Will he be uh, overdrafted? No, he will not. He, he will not because of the of the positional advantage that he will continue to, the, to bring to the table. What did the Raiders do for the wide receiver position uh, during the draft? Uh, the answer is nothing. <laughs> no, they added uh, – they lost Nelson Aguilar. Right. And they added – Johnny B, right? Johnny Brown there now? Yes. And they added Mr. Kenyon Drake. Look, they yeah, I I know, and Al's pointing out Willie Sneed. Like, that's but the the point the point is they really have done nothing. And it's this is the same crew that they had last year. Yeah. Ruggs and Brian Edwards, a year older, a, a year more uh got the rookie year out of the way, make that second year jump as a wide receiver, but Darren Waller is the offense. It runs through him. He's still going to see a bunch of targets. As far as we're projecting, it's still going to be Derek Carr as the quarterback for the Vegas Raiders. And I think that he is absolutely worth that early third-round pick. And lock it in. Don't, no gambling. No messing around of hoping you picked the one breakout tight end. You're done. You're locked in. There's haves and have-nots at yeah. tight end. There's Kelsey, Kittle, Andrews, Waller, or in a – the opposite order, and then there's hope, prayer, As, and dreams. When hitting on that tight end, hitting on the tight end, like if if Adam Troutman comes out and becomes one of these guys, 
that will feel better. Like you getting to call the shot and really hitting on the tight end, but you know that the probability of them turning into someone like Darren Waller is what two percent? Yeah, I most mean, of it, them end up like Jake Butt. Yeah, it's a, yes, a, it's actually Jake is Jake Tabut. Okay, Tabut. Uh, uh, but but your just your chances of hitting and getting weekly production is so low as soon as you get outside those top guys. And Waller is Waller is not going tight end he, or, or touchdown dependent. He gets targets, he gets yards, and we saw the bounce back that he gets to or that he finally had some touchdown regression in a positive way hit hit on nine scores last year yeah I mean it was an incredible season so if you believed it was paid out in his performance on the field just to put it to the test before I officially weigh in other players going in that exact same area in best ball drafts right now Miles Sanders I trust that you would take Darren Waller over Miles Sanders every single time Keenan Allen though Michael Thomas Allen Robinson yeah, that's it. It's tough to pass on names of guys like that and Najee Dobbins, but I, it, you, it's the third round, so I've already had my two picks, and I at that point I'd be willing to pass on those players to get someone like Darren Waller on the team. All right, I am gonna sell that he will be overdrafted. I'm gonna agree with you, Mike. I think we saw last year worth their weight in gold, mm -hmm. having the positional advantage. Our in our keeper league. Good luck out there. <laughs> Travis Kelsey. Yeah. I mean, we have three keepers per team. Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Darren Waller, all locked up, all yeah. kept. Yeah, and this is, this is not back to the is years. Is this why Kyle Pitts will be drafted higher than yeah, he should probably. be? Yeah, probably. But this is, these are not the years of you have to spend a first-round pick to get Gronk. You're spending a third to, to have a player who's putting up you know pretty – comparable production to Gronk. Sixth most targets amongst wide receivers if Waller was in the wide receiver That's group. That's so fabulous. All right, that was Buy or Sell from our friends at Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. BALLERS. Let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Green Bay fans just... I know we like the sleeper app, but you, you may need to hide yeah. from whatever pops through there in the next couple of months because it's a bear market right now. Oh, for for Rogers news, <laughs> yes, they're coming. Uh, I'm surprised that that Al's even in here today. I mean, are you doing okay, Al? I'm sure you're on the microphone. I'm hanging in there. Yeah, and you're pretty pro Rogers being your quarterback, right? I wish he'd want to be our quarterback. Oh. <laughs> I want you to want me. Okay, but exactly. what about this? I want you to want me to want you. What if he doesn't want to be your quarterback, but he's still your quarterback? I'd probably rather see him go. <gasps> you spoiled Green Bay fans <laughs> with your Brett Favre's and your Aaron Rodgers. You have no idea. You don't want Toxic locker rooms are no good. You man. have no idea what it's... A toxic... You can, you can fill my locker room with poison if you fit a Hall of Fame quarterback <laughs> throwing the ball. <laughs> Wasn't it toxic last year when they went 13 and 3 or something? I don't think so. What was their record last year? Something like that. I've moved on. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we we will put a bow on the earlier discussion here cuz the news NFL Network came out uh Mike Garofalo saying, you know, Rodgers told Green Bay free agents he wouldn't be back with the team in 2021. I also heard that he said that kind of after the Jordan Love move last year, not you know, not being the recruiter that they would like your quarterback to be right. from the free agent pool. Whispers that he had told a friend that there's about a five percent chance he'll be back with the team. I mean, or the, I think maybe the friend said that. I don't. It's just this so. Place is, your bets, we, Mike. Be the fantasy football gambling man that you oh, are. Man. Go trade for a weapon on another team that you already like. But that would go through the roof if Rodgers landed. Is it? Do you go? It's, it's Cortland Sutton. Pursue Cortland Sutton. Yes, one hundred percent. You go after Cortland Sutton. He will not uh, fetch the same trade tag or tra trade price tag as Jerry Judy, I believe, coming off of the ACL. It we we quickly forget how great some players are when they miss a year, and Cortland Sutton had a breakout campaign with really bad quarterback play. He is. He is an elite level wide receiver. He tore his ACL before the season even started. He'll be good to go when when twenty twenty one kicks Noah off. Fant? 
And it, I'm, maybe. Do you believe enough in Fant as a breakout candidate to go pick up Noah Fant in a I, dynasty league? Possibly, but I think that the Fant already carries a, a heavy price tag because of who he his draft capital. Still very young at the tight end position, and he can still whiff. Even if if Aaron Rodgers goes to to Denver, Fant could still whiff. Like he could be, maybe he turns into a touchdown Tunyon, but. Cortland Sutton will not whiff if Aaron Rodgers is there. And, and on top of that, I don't think that Cortland Sutton will whiff even if nothing happens and it's status quo and it's it's Teddy Bridgewater or it's Drew Locke. Cortland it's, Sutton's still great. If it's status quo based on draft capital, are you Sutton over Judy? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's move on here. Uh, ESPN reporting, Ramondre Stevenson, newly drafted Patriots running back, could threaten the roster spot of the – Heralded? Heralded <laughs> – Non fifth year option picked up Sonny Michelle. That the running that would backs, be that would make it easier for us in fantasy. Would it if Sony's gone? Then it's to just decide, Damian? yeah, I'd I'd prefer less options in the backfield. Yeah, Damian Harris would absolutely shoot up the ADP. It's tough in the streets, man. When you are a a running back, and I I I this this sounds exactly like the Patriots we know and we love. They're they're hard nosed, man. You don't produce. You get kicked off the team. Ravens signed uh, left tackle uh, Alejandro Villanueva. Yeah. We, this we, is the two-year deal. They, he pulled him over from the Steelers. Steelers lost Pouncey. They lost Villanueva. And he's he's already talking that garbage. Oh, back to the Steelers? Yeah. Now, well, he's look, not naming names, but he's talking about how great it is to be on a run-first team. Wide receivers don't like playing on run-first teams. They'd rather you know put up stats and make TikToks and stuff. He said that? Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I mean, you Who could he be talking about? You, you have to be that bold Man. to move to a division rival like that. But this is what that's, I was – That's a salty dog. It's what I was saying about the Najee Harris situation where you had a 31st-ranked run team and you move Pouncey and Villanueva off the line and you – I guess you you hope and pray. Here's the, here's the outcome for Najee Harris in a bad year. It's Joe Mixon. That's that's fair, right? Joe Mixon, two years ago, you're going to get some big games? You're going to end up in the top 15 range? That's it. I'm just saying if they don't patch it up, right. if they yeah, don't yeah, go yeah. back to run first, like Mixon got so many opportunities, but it was like the efficiency and the touchdown chances hurt him. But the, but you're saying it. top A bad year. Yeah, is, no, you're right. He's probably still in the top 15, which is I'm 100% with you. I think it will be interesting which drafts people reach for him and which don't. Yeah, that, I think that's his floor, and his ceiling is very high. All right, that was today's news notes presented by Sleeper Switcher League to the fastest growing fantasy platform today. Let's get into these uh, winners and losers. Hey, rookie, welcome to the NFL. All right, we're going to start in the NFC West with the San Francisco 49ers. Had the AFC winners and losers show on Tuesday. Before uh, before Jason made it a top priority to yeah. get Adams traded, uh, he wanted CMC from me, <laughs> so Stop. I did. It didn't happen. Yeah. He he did throw in a second rounder to try to okay okay CMC in a two. I mean, so. Uh, so just real quick to to play it out, if you you had you have top secret information in your back pocket and you know Aaron Rodgers is staying, would you make that deal? I should make that deal. I probably, <laughs> I probably don't because of our league, and you know, I picked up CMC with Cook. And yeah, I want to, I want to see that play out. But, um, yeah, uh, yeah. All right, moving on. Yeah, yeah. The NFC West, the San Francisco 49ers. The the most anticipation around the NFL draft was built around pick three. They went Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. Tons of upside, especially with Shanahan. They went Trey Sermon running back out of Ohio State in mm -hmm. the third round to twist the knife in my dynasty running back core of James Robinson and Raheem Mostert. Yep. And then uh, they went a late round running back too because their running backs every year, four to six of them get hurt. So they just keep that stockpile. And then four to six of them are great. That is that is right. Uh, so I'm, I want to focus a little bit on Trey Lance. Let's do we it. haven't talked about him really since the, the draft happened. Uh in in rookie picks in the quarterback rankings, 
I'm trusting Kyle Shanahan. I am trusting that he mortgaged everything to future first to move up. He took Trey Lance. Trey Lance is my number one quarterback. I am taking the risk over what feels like the certainty that Trevor Lawrence is going to be an excellent player for a very long time because this is fantasy football. I want the quarterback that rushed for over 1,100 yards. I want the shot at getting the next Josh Allen, the next Lamar Jackson, where Trevor Lawrence, I, I think he's an excellent quarterback, and he is mobile. I'm not – I know people, ah, Lawrence runs too. Yes, absolutely, Lawrence does run. But Trey Lance could be one of those 1,000-yard rushing quarterbacks on top of the passing production. So I ranked him number one. I put my money where my mouth is in our rookie draft. I was on the clock, and I was looking. I needed a quarterback. I took Trey Lance, and Trevor Lawrence was there for me to take. Sure, and I, I think it's a more compelling argument to simply rest it at the feet of Trey Lance. The upside is built in with the rushing prowess. Yes. I get criticized. If I criticize the 49ers or Kyle Shanahan, people believe it's because we're unabashed Cardinal fans. You know, everyone has their loyalties, and the 49ers Which are— Which is true. The 49ers suck. Right. And their fans smell bad. And so we're getting that out of the way earlier. Their fans smell <laughs> awful. That's it's not it's just a fact. Yeah. I don't, I don't have anything to smell do with it. Smell yourself. Smell yeah. Um but I don't like laying it at the feet of Trust Shanahan. Um I know he's a brilliant offensive mind. He's also a coach who, you know, I can already hear all the 49ers fans reminding me about what he had to rebuild. Look, three out of four seasons in San Francisco, he's been under under six wins. Yes. Um, this is a coach that also traded for Jimmy Garoppolo, did not provide fantasy value to Jimmy Garoppolo, the passer. He's not the runner. And that's why I think that's, I would – Yeah, that's the difference. That's why I think Trey Lance is more about Trey Lance than it is about Kyle Shanahan. I would still select Trevor Lawrence above him. I have Justin Fields one spot ahead of Trey Lance in my – rookie rankings okay? Um, because I'm looking career arc. I'm looking at the longevity of the situation. I think Trey Lance represents a tremendous amount of upside and a tremendous amount of risk. I believe that risk begins in year one. I think I've been the only one kind of believing that Jimmy Garoppolo might still be on this roster no, I, I'm when the not, season starts. Uh, Jason is very convinced that Garoppolo <laughs> will be gone. Uh, I am. I think that Garoppolo will be there, but I don't think that he will be the starter for the majority of the year. Well, you could have a couple of scenarios. One of them that is familiar, you could have an Alex Smith, Kansas City scenario where, where Garoppolo's the, the the starter for the majority of the year and then you see a little Trey Lance at the end. Or you could see a, uh, an Alex Smith, San Francisco situation where he was the leader of a pretty good team for about halfway through the year and then you saw Harbaugh switch to Colin Kaepernick. You remember that season? Yeah, Alex Smith got a concussion. Yeah, and, and Kaepernick uh, came in and played very well. So there, there, there are both of those outcomes. But if you drafted him to play him immediately, you could not be able to. It is, yes, th yes, that is definitely in the range of outcomes. So in, I'm, we're talking dynasty. So and you I, could play Lawrence instantaneously. Yes, that is that is also accurate. The difference in these scenarios of of Mahomes, the, the Mahomes, Alex Smith, number one, that is that's the outlier is. Letting quarterbacks redshirt. That just it that's the outlier now. And they traded two future firsts to get Trey Lance. They did. But that doesn't I mean the That's the Chiefs had to trade up and get Patrick Mahomes and he sat. But not two future firsts. I don't remember what the 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 total I don't draft think was. I, I don't think a head coach is sitting there going, does the capital reach the level where I have to do this. I, he, something he's cost. So you don't you trust him in acquiring Trey Lance, but you don't trust what he's saying. Because what he's saying is that they're not even competing. What they what he's saying is Jimmy Garoppolo is our guy. Yeah. And, I do and not Lance believe isn't that. even close to ready to compete. No, I don't believe that. Okay. I don't I don't believe So you trust parts of of Shanahan, just I, not the words. I trust the money. Okay. <laughs> well the money is still I mean Jimmy Garoppolo's got a lot of it. But I'm, I'm by money. I'm seeing. I'm saying metaphorical. I'm trusting the actions of the team. I believe that there's a potential for them to still believe Garoppolo gives them the best chance to win. To have seen what their team looks like every time Garoppolo gets hurt, which has been multiple times, and to need to to have the ability for the season to continue with what they invested, and obviously the future's Trey Lance too. Trey Sermon though, Trey to yeah. Trey here. Um, they lost Kevin Coleman. 
in the off season. Trey Sermon is a very Can up you and lose down. something if like if you, you never had it if you put it outside and like intentionally. No, uh, is that losing it right? Yeah. Like, oh man. Oh, I sure hope someone doesn't steal this. <laughs> steal this NFL player. Um, look, they, then they invest a third round pick, trade it up for Trey Sermon. Yes. So they traded up for both of their trays. Yes. Trey Sermon is extremely interesting. The trade up really does help for NFL running backs. It speaks to future fantasy success. They lost Jarek McKinnon as well. Yes. Uh, so I'm uh, Trey Sermon is very very intriguing in your rookie drafts, and I would be I'd be making moves to try and get him as well. Jason took him at the 108, I believe. So I mean, you had. You still I was had surprised. A, you had a plethora of second round wide receivers like that. Took him that over tier, Trevor Lawrence. That tier still existed, but this, Jason was very aggressive going after Trey Sermon. Yeah, and I didn't like that because <laughs> you wanted to do it. Well, I just <laughs> what what is Trey Sermon's potential in this offense? Raheem Mostert. We talked to Kyle Ustek on the show. Mostert was clearly their best back when healthy. I'm seeing a lot of win healthy insurance policies on this sure. NFL draft for the 49ers. Um, and Wayne Gallman's there as well. Jeff Wilson's there. So, uh, Trey Sermon, it might be a year, though. Yeah. Before. But Trey Sermon, in my opinion, was easily the fourth best running back uh, in the NFL draft. I liked him. I liked him. So he, he's got the size. He has the skills to be a big time producer in San Francisco. Running backs are great for fantasy. They like to keep it fresh in the backfield. Oh, so fresh. All right. Before we talk about our Arizona Cardinals and the rest of the NFC West, I want to thank today's sponsors. The sponsors of this show help this show continue. Uh, we do this year round. Uh, hundreds of shows every year. Producers twisting the dials back there. And so mm -hmm. we really appreciate these shows supporting the podcast. Hello, Fresh. You know them. You get fresh, pre-measured ingredients delivered straight to your door. We've been with them a long time, and um, I'll, I'll be honest. It's like almost a perfect uh, batting average on what arrives from HelloFresh. Everything that shows up at the door, not only is it pretty easy to, to make, it takes the stress out of dinner. It's a, it's a surprise. I mean, yeah. who doesn't want to kind of like experiment a little bit and get some of these meals that their chefs have figured out and, already tastes good. And like when, when you're trying to figure out your own meal at home, it's up, oh, we're having a hot dog. We had <laughs> cereal like, night last night, Mike. E exactly. We went cereal night. No, you get like, you get big boy meals yeah. from HelloFresh that are delicious. So I encourage you, go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers12 and use the code footballers12 and get this, you'll get 12 free meals, including free shipping. Once again, that is HelloFresh.com slash footballers12 and use the code footballers12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Andy, protecting you and yours at your house, I just wish there was a way that it was simple right. and safe. I would like the, to combine those, though. What if it was one word in the name of the company? Simply Safe. Shout out <laughs> to our people over there keeping America safe. Simply Safe and his award winning home security system is engineered with the latest technology to keep your family safe. Uh, but what really sets it apart, highly trained security expert, experts who are always there for you when you need them most. These are people, they're keeping you safe. I, I'm going to be honest with you. It's 100% true. We've had them in the studio for four years. I was up north with my family, got a phone call. There's an alarm going off at yep. the studio. One of our developers decided not to disable the <laughs> alarm. Luckily, you know, I found that out. But uh, they called me and yep. they said, hey, this is what's going on. Do we need to send people out there? I said, hold on. One of these knuckleheads probably set the alarm off. When an alarm goes off, a person who cares is there. They're making the phone call, making sure everything's okay. Even if you're just having a problem setting up your system, a person who cares is there for you with a friendly chat and a quick resolution. And you can learn more right now. Learn more about how Simply Safe can protect you and your family. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers today to customize your system. And you're going to get a free security camera if you sign up as well. Get a 60-day risk-free trial. There's nothing to lose here, man. Nothing to lose. SimplySafe.com slash footballers. If I was in a super flex situation to circle back to Trey Lance, I would, sure. be, I would be making the Trevor Lawrence decision. If I was in the can I find the chance at a top five for years, I'd be making the Trey Lance one. I think that it's going to be. And that's why I made the decision. It's going to be team situ team dependent. Of uh, I wanted that shot at 
a top five guy. I it's yeah, sure, absolutely. Tra- uh, Lawrence could get there. It's just what is the path to getting there? Where uh, I mean, if you want to talk about weapons, Trey Lance is surrounded by Debo. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Brandon Ayuk and George all Kittle under contract and an elite running game. So that's the, that was the reason I went for where, where Trey Lance said, like if if Lawrence. If he, if Lawrence turns into Andrew Luck, then I made a mistake. But if if Lawrence turns into someone like Baker Mayfield, where he's just winning games and he's a good NFL quarterback, but maybe he's not a big time fantasy producer. Yeah, I think Herbert is kind of what you're looking for. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That if, kind of fantasy. If Lawrence potential. turns into Herbert, then I made the wrong choice. All right, Arizona Cardinals. Not a lot to talk about winners and losers here, but there is a little bit. They spent a second round pick on Purdue wide out. Oh man. Six hundred pound Oh man squatter. Dead, squatter Rondell Moore. He is a beast. He is People are making the point of saying how adorable it's going to be to see Kyler Murray throw the oh. ball to Rondell Moore. Yeah, it's gonna be adorably ripping off people's faces. They, Rondell Moore is the player that the New York Giants thought they were drafting in the first round when they drafted Kadarius Tony. They just put the wrong card in. Well, the, uh, Kyler, it helps Kyler to add another yes. weapon. And uh, Andy Isabella, the experiment, I think, is over. Yeah. I think that's what this draft pick was about. It was We're not going to linger with Andy Isabella not developing. Christian Kirk, um, look, it, it could hurt Christian Kirk a little bit. If, yes. If, if you know A.J. Green and DeAndre Hopkins are going to be the starters. What's, what's interesting t- that we will have to see, uh, Rondell Moore is incredibly talented. He has... He exploded on the scene as a true freshman, crushed him. We talked about him when we were doing the rookie previews, but then he essentially missed his next two years because he was hurt. But an NFL team's believed enough to take him in the second round, and he projects as a slot wide receiver. He is a smaller guy, 5'9", 180, around there. He projects as a, as a slot wide receiver. So what do the Arizona Cardinals do when you have – you know, AJ Green on the outside and Christian Kirk is the one on the inside. So I agree that if everything plays out in Moore's favor, the biggest loser of that situation would be Christian Kirk. Yeah. So that was really the only offensive move that the Arizona Cardinals made uh, on draft day. They're pretty well uh, set up. They, they still need a tight end. Um, they spent some undrafted monies on some tight ends. And the, the word from the beat reporters this is neither here nor there. It's just an interesting fact for if we're we're talking longer term. If Collins, the linebacker they took in the first round with that pick, if he had been taken right before them, Najee was going to be the pick. Really? Yeah. How does that make you feel? Uh, a little sad that wow. we, that Najee didn't go to Arizona. But if you're if you're trying to invest heavily in Arizona running backs, okay, you. Just, just know that they were ready to spend a first on a running back. Winners and losers for the Los Angeles Rams. I know you shook your head a lot during this draft. Uh, second round pick. Words I cannot repeat on this podcast. 2-2 Atwell, Louisville wide receiver, second round pick. They spent a fourth round pick on Jacob Harris, another wide receiver. I don't know, They didn't man. have a lot of picks. No, they never do. They do have a lot of awesome wide receivers already on the team. So is Matthew Stafford a winner? Are some of the up-and-comers uh, Van Jefferson? Is he a potential loser of this situation? Not uh, Tutu. If you think Rondale Moore is small, you haven't seen Tutu at well. <laughs> uh, he, is, he is a very – for an NFL player, he is very small. Is this um, – is Arizona and Los Angeles, are they reacting to the – Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, offensive They want the, prowess. Yak, the yak guys? Well, I mean, yeah, they're adding these guys that you can get. I mean, you go watch Ronald Moore highlights in college. You're getting, Rondale. What did I say? Ronald. <laughs> okay. All right. Rondale Moore highlights. It's end arounds. It's yes. screen passes. It's getting him the ball in space. Manufacturer touches. 155 pound, two to Atwell in the second round. But I don't know what they're doing. But I also – here's where, here's where the, it's going to sound like we're being homers. I know. But, but I promise we are not. I don't know what the NFC West is doing because you have the Rams taking with their first pick in the draft. They took Tutu Atwell. And none of, no one – I'm not projecting any fantasy goodness for any of those players. But then the Seahawks said, with our first pick in the second round, we, we will see what you are doing, Rams. Well, actually, 
they did it first, and then the Rams followed them. They took a wide receiver. And they took a little they took wide receiver. Dwayne Eskridge, wide receiver. I, I don't know, man. You just re-signed Tyler Lockett. They had three picks in the draft. We don't have – I mean, that's it. So, uh, Dwayne Eskridge, Eskridge must be so good. <laughs> I This is what I'm saying. All three of them added uh, – the Cardinals, the Rams, and the Seahawks all drafted wide receivers. And uh, Russell Wilson gets his – I mean, they didn't draft another quarterback. They didn't go Jordan Love with the pick. They drafted no. a wideout with their first pick. So, you know, I don't think you can draw a lot of conclusions from that, you know, anything for the Seahawks offense from three picks in this draft and no. only one offensive player. So I guess Russ wins with another weapon. Yep. Ready for the NFC East? Let's go. The Eagles traded up. They picked up Heisman Trophy winner. Devonta Smith with the 10th pick, wide receiver, and jumped the New York Giants who wanted him. And then they drafted Kenneth Dave. Gainwell. It's me, Dave. Dave. <laughs> they drafted Kenneth Gainwell, running back out of Memphis. He dropped all the way to the fifth round, though. Yeah. And, um, okay, so they have Jordan Howard. They have Miles Sanders. Now they have Kenneth Gainwell. I mean, looking at Miles Sanders last year, his success rate as a pass-catching running back, it was – it was rough, man. Interesting. It, it was bad, and and you draft a specialized, you draft the best, uh, the, the best pass catching running back in the draft, and I say that knowing what Travis Etienne could do. But Kenneth Gainwell has wide receiver level skills because that's just what they do apparently in Memphis. It's that is very concerning to me for for looking at a three down ceiling for Miles Sanders. Jalen Hurts, they didn't draft another quarterback. Nope, and they did draft. Uh, top tier wide receiver so he's a winner from big, the draft yes. in multiple ways and big time this is one of the things that when we talked about Devonta Smith over the last couple of months it was or, or about Jalen Hurts it was like well if they added Devonta Smith a Jamar Chase a Jalen Waddle uh, maybe Hurts' upside starts to I mean Hurts Hurts will be starting with two first round wide receivers with Jalen Rager and Devonta Smith yeah Cowboys they spent a lot of picks on defense. They did what they had to do. They did. <laughs> they did the right thing. And there really aren't any winners and losers other than the fact they had a ton of picks and they didn't spend any on tight ends. So maybe Blake Jarwin comes out on oh, top. Oh, okay. Because they could have invested some. They had, what, uh, seven picks in the first four rounds. They didn't end up with a Friar Muth or anything of that nature. Of so, course not. What? When you have Blake Jarwin and his availability, yes. Mike. Well, uh, all right. The man got a boo-boo on his knee. He's coming back. Boo-boo. <laughs> it was a long boo-boo. It's a long yeah. recovery. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Giants, they, we just, you know, Dave doing his work did not. He end. did. He actually he traded did. down. He, 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 was, he was smart once he got beat by the Eagles. Well, half, half smart. I mean, That's what I mean. Like once he was dumb. You have to be dumb to be smart. Did you not know that? Yes. That's one I, of the key. Please explain this. It's one of the Jason Moore principles of play. <laughs> it's like you got to get up to get down. Got to get up to get down. Got to be, be dumb to be smart. smart. <laughs> so it's funny because he, he got passed by the Eagles, loses out on Devonta Smith. At that point, he still wanted a wide receiver. So he trades back, lets the Bears come up and get Justin Fields, and he ends up with the the next wide receiver off the board, Kadarius Toney, in the uh, first round, and ends up with another first-round pick and a fourth-round pick. So Yeah, the trade was excellent. I would have drafted Rondell Moore. If I were Dave, yeah, uh, and Kadarius Tony in rookie drafts, you do not like Kadarius Tony. I just I'm very concerned. Uh, I'm very concerned that it. it like, you look at his profile, and he was not in. Uh, he's a four year starter, which you prefer to have your guys be early declares. The success rate uh, of of guys coming out early is much higher than these guys who stay around all four years. He really has and. The, the year of production, that last year. And everything it is not, – not that it doesn't work because you see Debo and Brandon Ayuk, but his production is all at the line of scrimmage. Which it will be. And it will be in the NFL. Yeah. And he's very fast. It's, it'll be interesting. Now you have the archetype of Kenny Galladay, uh, the big-bodied receiver to go down the field, and you have Kadarius Toney. So I'm not writing him off. That, uh, absolutely. They spent a first-round pick on him. The, the more interesting thing to me is the way that – People are dra are, are choosing to draft him in your rookie drafts, where I grabbed him in the middle of the second round. 
I took a first round draft capital wide receiver behind uh, like all the second round guys were gone. I think third round guys were being drafted. People just don't want to draft Tony. Eh. Tony, Tony, Tony. Well, I get it. Here, hey. Problem number one, Kenny Galladay, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, established outside wide receivers with roles on this offense. Problem that number two. Dave does not like. Daniel Jones. Eh, Daniel Jones can get him the ball. He'll just fumble it a few times. He'll give everybody the ball. Yeah, he's a sharing, caring guy. So, Kadarius Co Tony, um, it's hard to see a really high fantasy ceiling today. Yeah. Does it hurt Darius Slayton and Sterling Shepard dynasty wise? I think absolutely it, has it does. To, right? Yeah. They the you're following the money of the team, follow the team actions. They spent they gave the biggest free agency contract to a, a wide receiver. They got the number one guy in uh, uh Kenny Galladay. And then they used their first pick on a wide receiver. They are not happy with the wide receivers. All right. Washington. The football team spent a third round pick on uh, a player I'm calling Dynamite Brown. Oh, wide receiver. Dino Brown. <laughs> Dino nice. Brown. Uh, no, it's, uh, is it pronounced Diami? Diami Brown? I actually do not know. But out of North Carolina, downfield threat wide receiver. Just another wide out to add to the uh, arsenal. Yeah. You know who's a winner this offseason? Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Holy goodness. That team is loaded with talent, and Fitzpatrick is going to be the guy, at least for this year. They also got a second-round tackle that I like, and um, they're a good team. They're a good football team. Yes, they are going to be a very good team, and they're going to be a strong offense. And Antonio Gibson survived, Mike. Yeah, of course he did because he's excellent. But I, I wanted he's to the, – There's no Urban Meyer situation going on over here. My – uh, I don't know if you had heard my analogy, but, but Mike, they signed a. Uh, there was an undrafted running back they picked up. Yeah, that's great. But you you know how in uh Be the Beverly Hillbillies when uh it, he's just the uh, Jed Jed Clampett, I think you know he shoots the ground with a shotgun and then finds oil, and that's what the Jaguars did with with James Robinson. Yeah. Except Urban Wire was like, no, no, let's just Cover we're, it we're, up. let's put some newspapers on that. I do not want your free money. Antonio Gibson survives. J.D. McKissick survives. Yep, for now. If the team's better on offense and McKissick had a big role. Well, yeah, we'll see. Got to use more than one, more, Mike. More receptions for Gibby. You'll be pining for that, I know. You've got lobbyists on the way to Washington right now. <laughs> You're darn right I do. Spare no expense. That would be the one football team you could send <laughs> lobbyists to. They're already there. <laughs> They're already in Washington. You got it. NFC North, let's start with the Lions. Uh, let's stop talking about them uh they did not spend draft capital on offensive players of relevance it was an area where we saw a potential wide receiver could have landed yeah but Sewell the offensive tackle from Oregon dropped yeah and man the Detroit war room was pumped they were they were pumped well they got a tackle Mike yes I know uh Amon Ross St. Brown went in the fourth as a wide receiver, which really doesn't always matter, but they do not have a lot of – Yeah, he's he is interesting. Out of USC, uh, and they they don't really have – they don't have the future at the wide receiver position. So if you're taking him in the later second or the, or the early third, I definitely think that St. Brown is worth an add. What about adding Jamar Jefferson, their seventh-round running back, in the hopes that you can make someone think you're trading them Justin Jefferson? That's very sneaky, <laughs> very underrated type of a move. Hopefully they don't look at the team name. Just cover that up. What about adding Brashad Perryman and Tyrell Williams based on the fact they didn't grab a high draft capital wideout? Like just the one-year rental of these players not, having I'm, actual I'm, value. I'm not doing it in a dynasty league, but in a redraft league, those guys might have their value. Who do you like more? Who uh, do you hate less? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take Perryman. Okay. The Vikings had a, a ton of picks in this draft. I believe four third-round picks. Goodness. That's a good time. Two years left on Kirk Cousins' contract, so they invested a third-round draft pick on Kellen Mond. Yesterday, or on Tuesday's show, Jason mentioned they were in the running for uh, yes. Justin Fields. Yeah, and I think, yeah, man, that would have been, that would have been a very controversial pick. Because the Minnesota fans turn on Kirk Cousins I'm just trying each to, and every week. I'm just trying to think of a Kellen Mond, James Bond joke. But I'm going to be. Oh, I'm going to workshop the it. The name's Mond. 
Kellen Mond. Mond. Yeah, that that was the. I mean, that was the it's low, right there. That's the low hanging <laughs> one I didn't throw out there because I didn't know if it was too dumb. It, no, it's great. But then I forgot what show I'm on. But you have to say it with a Connery. Oh, is that what it is? The name's Mond. The name's Mond. <laughs> there, oh, that's pretty good. Kellen Mond. <laughs> All right, not bad. Become something, Kellen Mond, <laughs> or don't. This is a top level show right now. No big winners and losers on this offense right oh, I here. mean, the the offense as a whole, their first pick was a tackle. Yeah. That helps everybody. Dalvin Cook can yeah. – Dalvin Cook? <laughs> yes. Name's Mond. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be practicing I am. in the mirror. That's right. Uh, the Bears – Oh, brother. <gasps> well, they already got the Hopkins drop. I'm not just giving that out willy-nilly every show, but they did draft Justin Fields. They traded up with the Giants, and they have a future. Or the, the hopes of one. And it's it's a big deal. It's a big deal for the offensive ceiling. When you have the future at quarterback potentially on the roster, you can be better than what you've been. You could not have been better than what you've been with Andy Dalton or Nick Foles or Mitch Trubisky. So if you want to know if a ceiling can exist, you have Justin Fields. Yes, Justin Fields. I think is going to have an absolutely incredible career. Uh, some, some interesting facts here. Quarterback 6'2 or taller over the last 20 years that ran a sub 4'5". Robert Griffin, who before he got injured, was incredible for fantasy. And Justin Fields, that is it. He was PFF's highest graded passer on intermediate throws. He is going we, to be great. I, I love Justin Fields. Yes. That's why I... I, I Take him a spot higher in Dynasty than Trey Lance, which I don't know if that's a popular opinion. I, yeah. I, it, it, peop, there's a very wide range where uh, of ranking between these three quarterbacks. I see him in every single possible order. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, Allen Robinson, you know, Darnell Mooney. Those the Darnell sure. Mooney Dynasty truthers out there. It, it, it'll be interesting. And Allen Robinson, I don't know if the volume's going to be the same. If it's Justin Fields from day one, it should be. I mean, that would be the smart thing to do. But I don't know what they do to protect fields. I don't know what this offense looks like. So I'm not going to guarantee a better season for Allen Robinson year one. But if they sign him to a long-term deal, which I think they should do, future could be bright, and he could mm -hmm. get to play with a very good quarterback. Yep. The Green Bay Packers. We've talked about them a lot today. 13-3. and three. Yeah, that was their record. Toxic locker room and all. So toxic. Amari Rodgers, they went with a wide receiver. I believe they traded up for him, did they not, in the third round? Yeah, moved up seven yes. spots to get him, gave up a fourth. There's room. There is room on that offense. If Aaron Rodgers is back and Amari Rodgers is good, I mean, Devontae Adams and company. Yeah, Amari Rodgers, wide receiver out of Clemson, coming off a 1,000-yard season. Uh, he's interesting because they're, if, he would be interesting only if Aaron Rodgers is there. If this is Jordan Love, then the third round wide receiver out of Clemson is not that interesting to me. NFC South, the Atlanta Falcons. First pick of the draft, Kyle Pitts, fourth overall. It's going to be wild. Here, here's a highlight for you so you know. And I do think it's a winner spot for Kyle Pitts himself yes. going to a, an offense, With a quarterback Arthur. that knows how to throw the football to the tight end position. A lot of production has come from the Atlanta tight ends. The best rookie tight end fantasy season over the last 30 years was the 2017 Evan Ingram season. That was 64 receptions, wow, really? 722 and 6. He's better than Shockey? That is the tight end 5 on the year. Do you believe that Kyle Pitts beats a 64 for 722 and 6 season? Because I'm guessing my projections will have him very close to those numbers almost yeah. exactly. The 60 to 70 for 700 to 800. I'm taking the I'm taking the smart money and I'm going to say under. Right. But but have it in your brain. Know what the best season in 30 years has been. Yeah. Even if he's better. It might be just a little bit better and that's still a tight end 4 5 6 season. Yeah. Be very excited for And he's Kyle awesome. Pitts. Yeah, he's awesome. Be very excited but know what you're know what you're doing with your draft capital that you might just be Really excited for this electric rookie, but you, you're probably setting your fifth-round pick on fire. The Falcons had eight picks in the first five rounds. They drafted zero running backs. 
is the biggest winner of the yep. draft, Mike Davis, running back, Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, him and Gaskin feel like the biggest uh, established players who were or were not in the draft, having that affect them. They're they project to be a strong offense, and that we you entered the draft with a lot of Julio Jones talk of perhaps Julio Jones is going to be traded. They did not make a move that said that that tried to put someone on the on the roster to replace him, and, unless you believe that's Kyle Pitts and that the team then would move forward with Calvin and, and Pitts. Matt Ryan is is going to be underdrafted. He's a winner in this draft, not only because they didn't draft another quarterback, they could have, but Kyle Pitts be adding him to the offense is going to be huge. I mean, this is the, the, the NFL completion leader for 2019-2020. He gets it done each and every week, and you know, I think Matt Ryan's going to be in play for fantasy players. Yep. He he usually is. He just every once he you have these weird seasons where his touchdown rate goes uh, goes plummeting through the basement, but the yards plummeting will be there through right yeah. through the basement. Yes, because into it, the earth. If it was just in the basement, right, you would you would know how to go get it. You just go down the stairs and you pick it up and you. You don't even back. know how to get to this rate. No, if there's a hole in your basement, where did it go? I don't know. You need like a caterpillar. A caterpillar? Yeah, like one of those machines. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant the actual insect. Like, what well, it would do, take a while. What, what, what do you know about caterpillars going down tunnels? Don't they burrow really deep in the ground to become butterflies? Isn't that the... Oh, is that... Yeah, because you know he'll come back up because he can fly out? <laughs> sure, Mike. Tie it together with what I didn't mean. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> a caterpillar. Uh, all right, moving on. The Carolina Panthers. They passed on Justin Fields, too. Yes, they did. They took J.C. Horn, the cornerback, in the first round. Who I love, but – and both of the teams that passed on quarterback took good cornerbacks. Terrace Marshall Jr. was their second-round pick, wide receiver. Has an opportunity to contribute from day one mm -hmm. in this offense if they have a quarterback. And I like Marshall. I thought he was great. Um, slipped in the draft. Chuba Hubbard, fourth-round pick, running back, depth for Christian McCaffrey. You've – We've seen it. We've seen what happens if Christian McCaffrey misses time, and it's the backup can be very productive. Yeah, and then they get a contract with the Falcons. Yeah, but Chuba had a had an absolutely incredible season a couple years ago. He's very fast. Uh, if given the opportunity on this team, per you know, heaven forbid, CMC has to miss some games. Chuba's right in. He's locked in that you're going to be picking him up and playing him. Robbie Anderson, is he a loser because they drafted Marshall in the second round and Anderson's a free agent in 2022? I don't think he is a, a loser because of the addition of Terrace. I think he'll still be who he was. and With Curtis Samuel leaving and Terrace replacing. Yeah, it. you were hoping for a better path to more targets for both DJ Moore and more assured targets, I should say, for DJ Moore and Robbie. And I think that Rob, if Robbie plays well this year, I think they'll extend him. Sam Darnold is the quarterback of the Carolina Panthers for the 2021 season. That is factual information. They did pick up the fifth-year option on Sam Darnold, and he's going to be the guy. Okay. All right, the Buccaneers. Okay. The Buccaneers brought back all their starters. The Buccaneers didn't. This was a polishing draft for the Super Bowl champs. They did go with Kyle Trask in the second round. Which they told Brady about. Oh, what, what an honor to be, I mean. I'm just saying. They're, yeah, like this, like a good organization? Yes, yeah, good organization, a Super Bowl winning team went to their franchise quarterback and said, hey, look, we are going to draft a backup. The best part, Mike, is that, that Tom Brady is 100 years old. <laughs> and they even told Tom Brady. Like, it shouldn't have been. Like, of all the people you don't have to tell. Tom, and, and you know what? Tom Brady is the kind of guy that would have been he would have been missed. Yes, he would have He would have upset. had a chip on his shoulder going, this youngster coming in here after me. At, but Trask has a little bit of intrigue with sure. the fact that he'll be behind Brady. That's mm -hmm. a great mentor. Bruce Arians, a great quarterback whisperer and time to mature. And he's a second-round pick, so the draft capital is there for a chance in the future. Agreed. And Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones survive. They did. Which is their career theme. That is their whole goal. Survive. Just, just, ha, ha, ha. Yes, yes. And then the Saints. Let's talk about the New Orleans Saints. 12-4 and four last year. Went defense for the first three draft picks. Drafted a quarterback in the fourth round. Ian Book. 
and there you go. We're, we thought that a, a wide receiver might end up yeah. there. They did in the seventh round, but it wasn't one of the prolific ones. Were you the one whispering that you might be in on Traquan Smith this year without Jason? That would be Jason. Okay. And he is locked in. I mean, Traquan Smith's locked in as a starter. Yeah. Emmanuel Sanders is gone. So, Traquan Smith is interesting. Yes, he could be. So is Adam Troutman. Adam Troutman is. Yeah, that's the face of a guy who's like, I expected them to add a tight end. Adam Troutman. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows right now? But uh, did we do it, Brooks? We got winners and losers from the entire <sighs> NFL? Oh, yeah. And it was perfect. We just perfect oh, analysis through and through. It was, it was so through. good. Did you hear that caterpillar discussion? Right. Incredible stuff. Is that happening. the kind of stuff you were looking for? Hard hitting, Brooksy? Yeah, I learned a lot from that. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Next week is Dynasty Week. Oh, man. So we'll have all of your fantasy football news, notes, information, everything to get your team ready, but it is Dynasty Week. We'll be focused on uh, Dynasty rosters, teams, rookies, all of that. And there are updated rankings, rookie rankings, Dynasty rankings in the UDK right now. Mm -hmm. Those are live at ultimatedraftkit.com. I wonder if Jason's found a trade partner by now. Uh, he has not reached out to me yet. So he still respects you. Yes. Yeah, he just knows you won't take that junk. He knows you won't take that junk. All right, that is it for the what Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Devontae Adams junk. <laughs> his offer. Oh, Whatever yes. his offer is, he's going to be back. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.